Hey guys, welcome back to Spec Traditions. I'm Shonda and welcome back to the next garden tour. I had to give the chickens and the ducks some snacks to keep them quiet for a minute. It was insane. All right guys, so let's start, I'll always start with the tomato. It used to be like tomato alley. But these are all the tomatoes. There's a lot. So we'll start here. I want to try to tell you guys what everything is this time. Oh no, don't tell me my steak is out. Hmm, ain't that something? Okay, this is very strange. Oh, let's see it. Alright, so this is a great white from MI Gardener. And most of these should be like two of each plant. That is what I tried to do. So I think this is one as well. This is a Dr. Witchies. As you can see, they're doing quite well. This should also be Dr. Witchies. This one is an Abe Lincoln. These two. I can't wait for everything to start producing so I can remember what's what. This is a beef steak here. You can see it's, they're doing really well. I have had some aphids. I did put some neem oil down. I need to do it again this week. And you should do it like every seven to ten days so it's been at least ten now so we'll be doing that most of starting here these are pretty much i think amish paste a lot of and then we have a lot of romas all in here all of these are probably romas and maybe one san marzano i'm trying to get a lot of paste tomatoes for canning This is a ground cherry. Our first time growing that. You can see we've got quite a few on here. So we're trying that out for the first time. One of the hanging strawberry plants. More tomatoes. That's a super sweet 100 right there. This is another super sweet 100. I had a couple of different varieties because I had some. Oh, you see that lizard? Check it out. Hello, lizard. I wonder if I could catch it. Probably not. Kids would be so excited if I did, though. Look at that. It's pretty. I love how it has a red head and a blue tail. Look at that. Hi. You guys are super fast. I would never be able to catch you. Oh boy, I see a bunch of ants. I need to get the DE. Guys, no, I do not do ants. They are not my friend. <laughs> it moved as soon as I left. 
All right, so. Where'd the lizard go? He left. Me no likey ants. No, no, no. Chicken, what are you doing over here? You're one of the young babies. Hmm? You don't belong in the garden. Here, I'll open it for you. Come on. Okay, so many interruptions between the ants and the chicken over here. So now let's get back to business. So I was saying that I had a lot of um, different varieties. Oh, there's the lizard tail. Oh my goodness, I almost caught it. Okay, um, a lot of varieties of Super Sweet 100. So this is Super Sweet 100. This one is from Urban, um, no, from Fairy Morris Seeds. I probably have some. Here's more fairy morris. There was a hybrid variety. So I have, I think, four-ish different Super Sweet 100 plants. I believe it's these four right here. So those are good. You can see they come up pretty high already. You really are doing well. Let's see. I'm not sticking my hand in that one because there's ants in there. Which means I'm not sticking them in any of these over here now. <laughs> so, I can't tell you what everything is anymore. I'm not doing it. Not going to happen, my friends. And yeah, that one's gone. Okay, so, no more on the names. Sun sugar. Alright, so, you have a sun sugar here means there's two sun sugars here different varieties so let's skip the name on, on the varieties right now which I do have a list of them written down so I can just put up um, snapshot of all the varieties that I grew and just do it that way but lots of tomatoes and they're doing really well some of them have blooms already. You can see. That they're growing nice and tall. And they have nice thick stems. Some of them I'm going to have to put a second stake on because I didn't pull all the suckers off so some of the suckers have grown into their own like this one here this was the main stem and it went this way but I didn't get a sucker that was this was the sucker so that sucker grew off which I could have taken it and cloned it but I did not as of now it smells like tomatoes over here <laughs> That's a Paul Robeson. You can see that. But they're really doing well. They really are. So next we have the raised bed that we built last. And this one has cucumbers in the back row, and they will trellis on this cattle panel here. 
and we have different squashes in the front. So for the cucumbers, there are, um, there's Market Moor, there's Be It, and Boston and Chicago pickling. So those are the four varieties of pickles that we have. I mean pickles of um, cucumbers that we have. And then for our squash, there's like um, zucchini squash. So I think I have Black Beauty and something else. I can't remember the name of that one. This one is straight, straight squash, I think it says. So we've gotten some of these growing. I see some flowers. I see some with fruit. So we have male and females in here. That's a cucumber. There's several on here. Ripped off, might as well take it away. You can see there's one there, there's one there. Another one going there. This one here, there. That's exciting. You can see more on there. So they are growing just fine. I'm going to, once I get a little bit bigger, start putting them up on the trellis here. But not quite yet. So for squash, oh, that's a cucumber that goes back there. Right, that's a cucumber, that's a squash. You can see they're all doing really well. Um, this bed was filled with um, a lot of compost from the chicken and the ducks. So that I know it's going to be great soil for them. Here we have our peppers. None of these back here are the hot peppers. Mostly different kinds of bell peppers. That's what these are. Orange bell. King of the North. More King of the North. See, these have some little peppers growing on them already. So do these. And this is a Horizon bell pepper. You look, oh, there's a ladybug. Hi there, ladybug. That's a California Wonder. So all these I said are different kinds of bell peppers and they will also trellis on this other uh, cattle panel we have here here's a few more we didn't have oh i can't say that we didn't have we did we had more peppers that would fit on this eight foot cattle panel so these will just go on poles here you can see this one has several blooms on it that's mini bell peppers so that'll be a different, um, bunch of different colors all in one. And all of these have about four plants in each pot of the same variety. Since peppers like to be with friends. So they all have some friends with them. Over here, there's another strawberry hanging pot we have there. Um, this here is all green beans. So are those four over there. So they'll come up over here on this. And then this one, we have one extra squash plant because I didn't want to, you know, I grew everything from seed and I don't like to throw plants away like that. Just, I can't do it. <laughs> so I found a home for it and we just don't have any green beans, but that's a black beauty in there. Okay, so back over here, we have some volunteer um, carrots. Let's see, we can probably see these because this one's on the end. Let me pull this down a little bit. Yep. So that's a volunteer carrot. There's two of them. In here. But I planted, 
Kajari melons in here. So there's four, there should be four plants, four seeds that I put in here. One, two, three. Looks like only three germinated, so that's fine though. Because I really only wanted one, but it's a very big pot, so two would be okay. And in here is Tommy Apple. And I, this is not, this This was something that just kind of volunteered in here, so I left it because I wasn't sure what it was. It may just be a weed. But Tommy Apple is what was planted in here. And I don't see any life from it yet. So they may not terminate. We'll see. So it's Tommy Apple and then Kajari Melons with two volunteer tomato, um, tomatoes, two volunteer carrots. So that's what's in there. Now here we have our elderberry plants. There's two pots. Or I should say our elderberry bushes. They are growing very well. You can see they put off the flowers. Here's the flowers there. So we should have some berries in the fall. There's more growing on that one. So elderberry's doing well. So over here we have three more tomato plants because again I ran out of space and I wasn't throwing anything away. So there you have it. Three more beautiful plants. And they are flowering and doing well. There is a chicken in the blueberry bush. Hold on one second. They are really eating up the blueberry leaves. It's like we'll never get real blueberries with these darn chickens. It's never gonna happen. Anywho, all right, so those were the last three tomatoes that I showed you guys. So here we have some celery growing. You can see that's doing fine. Here is one of three potatoes. So that I see one coming up here. There are more in there. I guess they'll just be coming when they come. But there's those two pots right there are also potatoes. You can see that one has sprouts on it. So they are coming along. Here we have most of our strawberry plants. There's one low in a low pot. We just picked strawberries yesterday, so it's not gonna be a whole lot of them in here that's really red. But we still have lots more coming. You can see in there. Some back there too. So these are strawberries, and then we have our two strawberry towers, the crate towers that we built. These do have some more that are ready that were not ready yesterday. So they're very good. But you can see there's a lot more strawberries on there. crazy because we literally just picked strawberries yesterday and I still see that one's ready a lot that are ready to be picked again so this side we had more on it last year and a lot of them died out. I think there's some of them just didn't get watered properly. Some of them got too much water. So we had to readjust. You can see some of the dead roots that are in there. But a lot came back. So even with that, we're, we're happy with it. 
and then there's the new um, green stalk that we put in the front garden as well so we'll take a look at that a little bit later so here we have um, again I had some extra plants that I had started from seed and I didn't want to throw them away so these are collards I just threw them in here because I did not want them to just go to waste we'll see what happens with them it might be too hot for them to really take off because they're moving really slow then here we have four more pots of peppers that's what these are, which I forgot to change these. These tags do not last, these little plastic ones. But this is a jalapeno. This is a tam jalapeno. This is, I don't know right now. Oh, here it is. This is a California orange, I think. And then over here, I never know how to say this. Quadrado di Asati Giallo. That's what that is. All right, so this is just the view from the other side. So now I'm in the herb area. So we have these awesome veg trug um, raised beds basically and they're sectioned off with four sections here's where you can see that there's four sections in the front and four in the back so it's eight sections all together in one veg truck and these are awesome um you can do anything pretty much in here except for like a deep rooted thing so probably not carrots unless there's like the short ones and, and no tomatoes i would say but you could do so many things with this we use it just for herbs so this entire one is eight different types of peppermint. All peppermint. Um, this is peppermint as well. This is echinacea in this pot here. We have sage right here. Which smells so good. Oh, it smells so yummy. Some, some lavender back there. This is thyme. I'm always picking up weeds where things fall into it. And so they start growing. It's crazy. But here's thyme. More thyme. Some of these don't have anything in them and I'm supposed to put some basil in here. And I haven't put them in here yet. So here's some basil here. This, I believe was chamomile. Yep. That we had from last year and I guess it either reseeded itself or what but it came back so we do have some chamomile there's some dill that I didn't do much with my dill I, I failed on my dill um, I need I really need to, one thing that I've learned and I've got to make sure I do this year is I focus so much on the vegetables and the fruit that my herbs, I need to make sure that I'm cutting them early on to get more harvest of them, drying them out and, and doing it that way. But it's taking me forever to get that done. <laughs> so it's like a process. I'm like, for some reason, I'm not taking care of. But I'm going to do it this year. Got to get it done. Here's some Thai basil, also known as holy basil. More sage. More little maple looking leaves weeds growing that's one thing about growing as you can see there's trees all around here like we get lots of things that fall down into the garden and want to grow so gotta take care of that more sage this was a um, tiny Tim tomato I don't say it was but they're a determinate variety, so they put off a lot of fruit and then they're done. You can see a lot of the leaves are yellow and dead, but it still has fruit on them. So we'll just get, eat those up and then get rid of this plant here. There's even new growth growing down here. <laughs> this is all oregano. Like I need to cut this while it's beautiful and, and lush before it gets starts getting dark leaves and, and starts becoming bad. Because that happens, and you, then you lose some of the good stuff that you could have used in your kitchen, you know? So, 
I need to get out here and cut my herbs. Hopefully I can finish this and get some of that cut today. That's what I want to do for sure. Um, now this is actually dill that went to seed. Well, that's funny. Maybe that's not chamomile. Because these look exactly the same. I think that was dill that went to seed, not chamomile. Yeah, pretty sure of it because there's a dill plant that was right behind that. So I think some dill seeds might have fell in there. That's fine. But this is definitely dill. This is fern leaf dill. And you see it bolted and went to seed. So that's what this is. And so now I'll have more that will pop up, <laughs> which is just great. Um, what's back here? This is, now this has gone to seed. Um, I think it's cilantro. It came back. And there's also some oregano mixed in here with it. So that's just like a big crazy mess. This is echinacea right here. That I know for sure. More um, um, oregano. Some chives. More oregano. And these empty ones that you see here, like this where you just see some old roots from last year. Again, these were things that were um, are, that are not cold hardy and do not come back. Like all the oregano and stuff, that stuff came back from last year. Peppermint, all that came back. I didn't have to do anything with that. Even the chives, it came back from last year. And this is a jasmine, I guess, plant, tree, bush. I need to take this out and plant it in a bigger pot so that it can grow. I didn't replant this. This was from last year and it came back. So I definitely want to take care of that because that is good to have as well. You can see it's starting to put some flowers out. So there's the jasmine. But yeah, these are the, this is the herb area where most of the herbs are grown on our homestead. So here are a couple more herbs that we grow in pots because they are perennials. And we know we, they will grow big, so we really want those to be here. That's sage. We grow, we use a lot of sage. Lemon balm, rosemary, lavender, peppermint, and thyme. Those, like these are, are like majorly the big the herbs we really use a lot here. So I was telling you about basil. I started my basil all from seed. And I had a lot of little plants. So I was doing it where I would take them and separate them, overseed, let them grow, separate them, and then plant them individually. So that's what I did here, is I would take one and just put it in these little pots. And these were in the greenhouse. But I wanted them to come out so they didn't get overheated. So I just hung them along the fence here. And so that's doing pretty well. They get, they do get dry. I just have to water these again. But um, they do better out here. Now, I would love to have like a big pot of this that grows really huge. But I have yet for that to happen. So here's the front garden, guys. I'm sorry, the back garden. Here's the back garden. Everything that's back here. I never got to plant these marigolds yet. Like, I'm really sucking right now. I have some long planter boxes that I want to put these in and just set them like around throughout the garden. I need to do that. Like I have a lot of work to do back here. I do. I'll get there. Life is busy. You guys know that. It's okay. You can see all of the nasturtiums that are hanging on this the duck side in those color pots as well. And that's just so they look pretty. We don't really, I've tasted them. You can eat nasturtiums, the flowers and the leaves. They're kind of peppery. I'm not a big peppery person, so I don't really want them to, for eat eating. So I don't really want them for eating, but they're beautiful. So we have those there. And I also have daisies in that pot, as you can see, grew up. They're really tall. I didn't realize how tall daisy flowers grew. So I was like, whoa. But those were from seeds and they are perennial so it's nice that I don't have to deal with them like they come back every year so yeah so that's everything in the back and I'll show you guys what's going on in the front garden
All right, so the front garden. It's a quick overview. So there's still kale in this first garden bed here. This is a four by four raised bed and this is the kale bed. So these are I'm trying to keep any of the cabbage moths off of them because they like that. <laughs> so it's not foolproof. So issue is my PVC pipe is a little higher than it needs to be. So if I could bring it down a little bit, it'll cover it completely, but I think it still helps. All right, so that's number one. Number two, that is cauliflower that went to seed. And I wasn't, I'm not really a seed saver. I haven't gotten into that really yet, but you know, we've done a few things where we've saved, but not much. Um, this is all cabbages that are in here. So I don't see any heads on anything yet. So this may or may not pan out for the cabbages. Oh, there's also some peas on that back row that will climb this trellis. So yeah, there's um, cabbages, I don't see any as of yet. Number three is our walking onions. They're Egyptian walking onions. So these put off onions up top as well as in the ground. And it keeps falling out of the garden. I'm like trying to keep putting it back inside. So this started off as the garlic bed because we did garlic for the first time. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to rearrange some things um, after this season with this because I'd like to have this be entirely walking onions or just garlic um so one of these things will definitely be coming up and we'll replant them in something different uh, i'm not sure which one yet but i'll figure it out maybe this one here it may be this one right beside it so one will be walking onions and one will be the garlic bed so because this we don't do a whole lot of as you can see, there was two cabbages in there, um, some kale. That was because I had some extra purple kales, which I'll probably just go ahead and put in the normal kale bed. And that way we won't have that issue. Um, there's some celery in here, which is bolted and gone to seed. So this, these two did not, they're fine. Here we have some calendula. This bed, the last time you saw it, it was just a four by four and it was just asparagus here and the tomatoes were there in the back. However, it didn't have that upper layer. So what we did was we wanted to make sure that the tomatoes had a nice um, solid you know, depth. So we gave it the extra six feet, six inches, I'm sorry, so that it could have a really big root system. So that's what that is there. So that's the tomatoes that are growing up on this trellis and the bags on the side are peppers. This is a cayenne pepper. I put the hot peppers in the front yard so we wouldn't have any confusion on what's hot and what's not. And this is ring of fire. Um, and those, I don't really eat hot peppers but I'd like to just use those to dry them for seasonings to make a cayenne pepper. Um, and the ring of fire, I forget what I was gonna use that for. I don't remember, but I'll look it up and see. But yeah, so this bed, like I said, is tomatoes. They're doing just fine. And in front here, we have asparagus. So those are doing good. Over here, we have Georgia sweet onions. This entire bed is that. Here is our green stock planter, which we just installed for about a week ago. So this is all new. So far I like it. 
gotta just keep checking and making sure that there's water everywhere. I am mad that I did not get the spinner that goes on the bottom. I thought it came with the spinner, but you needed to pay extra for that to get that on the side. So I may have to place another order to get the spinner because the sun here, if you look here, it starts back there. So it will get that side, that back side of this. It will get the back side of this over here in the morning. So the sun goes up this way. And so then it'll get some more this side in the afternoon. And then in the evening, it'll get this other side on this side. So it does kind of get all of it. However, that back side does not get the most. And there are lots of strawberry bits back here. I just hope that they are getting enough of what they need. So we'll see. But it would, it would be very helpful to have a spinner on here. That would be great. Yes, that's fine. That's If you want to stop, you can stop. Silas, stop throwing your frisbee on top of the trailer. Okay. All right, so next up is these... Um, are these turquoise pots? This is where we have some ginger planted. I don't see any sprouts yet. This one was planted first. No green coming up yet. That'll be exciting when it does. Here is peppermint plant. Growing here. Love the peppermint. These two pots are empty because I'm going to be planting yarrow in one and, uh, uh, excuse me, another calendula in one. However, earlier I was telling you guys that I had a jasmine, jasmine plant back there that needs, to, if I put it in a bigger pot, I'll be able to get a bigger harvest off of that. Sorry, there's someone cutting grass. Um, I'm thinking to put the jasmine back here, maybe right here, or put this, maybe move the peppermint over, although it's in such a big pot, that's why I had that in the corner. So I may just put the jasmine here, I'm not sure, you want to get the jasmine out for sure, so that can have more room to grow, just not sure where yet. All right, so the next 4x4 four four bed has all the melons. Um, let me see, I think it's Kajari melon, Tommy apple, canary melon. Yeah, I think it's just those three. And what's where, I don't remember. I have to wait till they start growing. <laughs> I think we lost some tags in this bed. Not a big deal. So far, I don't see any female fruit on any of these. Anyway. No female fruit so far. Oh, there we go. So there's one. Right there, yay. So something's growing, there's two. So we got two fruits coming out of these. Looking for a tag to see what this was. Of course, I don't see it. Oh well. So I don't see any of the tags here. I don't know where they are, but yeah, some fruit are growing, so that's good. All right, so next we have this bed, which was not supposed to be a tomato bed, but again, I had extra tomato plants and I did not want to waste them. So we put six tomato plants in here. Yes, we did. And I can see aphids are really 
see, look at that. They've gotten on there pretty good. And that is an extra whole stalk anyway, so I may just take that whole thing out. Let's see. Yeah, we don't even need that. Let's get rid of that. So, we have six tomato plants here. I believe they're all Amish paste. And I have probably 10 more Amish paste tomato plants in the greenhouse that I just don't have anywhere to put. So they're gonna grow in there and do whatever they do. I need to get some neem oil out here. All these little white things and aphids and yeah, we gotta get some neem oil out here. So, this here is, what is this? I think this is bee balm. Yep, this is bee balm. Over here we have spearmint. And this was a weed or some type of plant that was sitting out here, you know, cause this used to be all like that, just overgrown mess. And it was small and kind of cute, so I left it. But now it's getting crazy big. So I'm going to take this out. <laughs> that won't be here. We'll plant something else there for sure. Something that can be pretty in the spot. Because this is becoming overgrown and crazy looking. So that's going to go. Here's another celery. Over here we have, which we had crazy rain. I need to harvest some of this. But this is lettuce. I see slug on here. I need to sprinkle some sluggo out here in the front yard. But this is two different varieties of lettuce. Sorry, this is two different varieties of lettuce here. And we have spinach over there that is trying to bolt because we've had some 90 degree days for, um, like over the, over the last three days, three, four days. So that's been crazy. Then here in the big raised bed, we have pulled out all of the collard greens and the cauliflower that were finished. Well, here's some more um, collards, collards that were here, but we know that they will regrow a little bit, so we left a few here. But all of that was cauliflower and collard greens. So we pulled those up and we're going to put some bush beans in this entire space so that we can get a lot of beans for canning because we do a lot of string beans. In the front there were peas that I planted. Um, some of them germinated. We had peas along this whole entire thing here. Um, we didn't get any down here from that pack, but these germinated fine. And so what's left in here is Brussels sprouts. These are all Brussels sprouts. Wait, is this one Brussels sprout? Yep, that's a Brussels sprout too. So these are all Brussels sprouts. You can see them coming on. So those are good. So we'll let these continue on and keep growing and hopefully we'll get some Brussels sprouts. When they're done, this will be cleaned out. And again, um, We'll probably just put more beans in here because we need you need a lot of big um, a lot of big beans, a lot of plants of beans to get any significant harvest to do anything with. So that's the plan for this. This is definitely high enough now it will climb. And I'm glad I got that. Um, I'm glad I got the collars out because they were really overshadowing the peas that were over here. So. It's good that they're gone. Let's see if I can get these to go up in this trellis. Okay, so here are the peas now growing up on the trellis. Now that they have space and are not being overshadowed by the collard greens that were. I mean, those huge leaves were really like pushing out through here. So these have some room to breathe and grow again, which is great. Now what's growing in that? 
Whose cocoon is that? Ugh. Anywho, so yes, yeah, so I gotta get some neem for the tomatoes. Tear out that big weed that was looking pretty at first. And replant some green beans in here. Cut down these PVC pipes so that the cloth can fit over the whole thing. And when I tear out the cabbage from that bed, I'll be able to put in, um, probably put the garlic in there and let that entire bed be garlic. So this entire bed can be walking onions. Uh oh, there we go. So this can be walking onions and that can be all garlic. So the permanent beds, you know, some things will be permanent beds like asparagus, that will be permanent asparagus. Garlic will be permanent garlic. Onions will be permanent onions. And then I'll have one, two. Those will probably always be melons because I don't have room for melons in the back. So I'll have one bed where the tomatoes are, where I can continue to grow more tomatoes every year or do something else. But this is pretty much what we eat and what we need. So it'll probably be what, pretty much what it is. This will be cabbage. Let's see, it'll be kale, cabbage, garlic, onions, asparagus, onions, melons, tomatoes. Collards and green beans. We'll be good. <laughs>